Shape up or ship out. That's the message from the head of the Australian Army, Lieutenant General David Morrison, revealing 100 personnel, mostly soldiers, are under investigation for distributing sexually explicit emails and images of women. Three members of the Army have been suspended so far. In a video message to troops, Lieutenant General David Morrison warns, quote, if you can't support the values of the Australian Army, you're not welcome. On all operations, female soldiers and officers have proven themselves worthy of the best traditions of the Australian Army. They are vital to us, maintaining our capability now and into the future. If that does not suit you, then get out. You may find another employer where your attitude and behaviour is acceptable, but I doubt it. That's the Chief of the Army. He's described this latest incident as worse than the Skype scandal of 2011. Lieutenant General David Morrison joins us now in our Parliament House studios. David Morrison, good morning. Welcome back to breakfast. Yes, good morning, Fran. Uh, when we last spoke, you were at the UN talking about the role of women in the Australian Defence Forces. How disappointed are you to be back here talking about another scandal in the Defence Forces? I don't think I've got the words to describe my uh, sense of disappointment and my sense of anger and frustration, Fran. Why do some of your men have such a low view of women? Do you, do you understand it? No, I don't. Um, and the point I'd make here is that there are 50,000 men and women in the Australian Army at the moment in the regular and reserve forces, and the overwhelming majority of those treat each other with dignity and respect, and the product of that is the absolutely extraordinary work that they do both here in Australia and overseas and yet there are uh, pockets within our uh, workforce uh, that just don't understand uh, decency and don't understand the absolute requirement for respect between colleagues and there is as I said uh, in my message to the army yesterday absolutely no place for them and if I can establish uh, their guilt and I, I you know I need to be careful here that the matters are still under investigation and even though we're considering suspension of a further five uh, people, that is not a presumption of guilt at this stage. But if that guilt is guilt and complicity is established, then they will be discharged from the army. Let's go to um, the allegations, the actual um, events. The Australian newspaper reports today a, a group of soldiers calling themselves apparently the Jedi Council, uh, having sex with women they met in clubs and then sending boastful emails with images of those sexual encounters around. Is that a fair description of these emails? <laughs> Uh, I think that information was released, I'm not sure, but I think that relation, uh, information was released through the New South Wales Police. I have... Um, Is that a fair description of... Uh, it's, it's a fair description of what I have been told. There are other things that uh, we are looking at, offences to do with... Uh, uh, inappropriate use of the defence computing systems. There are references in some of the many emails that we've seen to perhaps possibly the use of illicit drugs and they are all matters for investigation by uh, the ADF investigative service. In terms of the, the sexually explicit material, is mm. that the worst of it that I just described there? I, I, I'm not trying to, to fudge the answer here, Fran. I haven't seen a great deal of what... Uh, is purported to have been sent across uh, either the defence computing system or across the internet. Um, and I can assure you, I didn't dwell at, at uh, on any of the imageries. It, I found it repugnant. I, I think you're right in describing it. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, uh, dance around this one lightly. It does go to the heart of demeaning uh, women through uh, explicit imagery as well as uh, very derogatory and repulsive text. And also, you mentioned yesterday, digitally enhanced images, sexually enhanced. Can can you give us a sense of who those images are of? Were they of some oh, of their uh, colleagues, fellow, uh, fem fellow female soldiers? No, I'm not going to make comment about that because I've got real privacy concerns for the women who are the victims of this group's alleged actions. I, I can say that uh, I did see a, an image that had been digitally altered to, with the specific purpose of demeaning that woman, but that's as far as I've seen and that's as much evidence as I have at the moment. And is there video material? Uh, as far as I know, no, but again, I haven't been made uh, privy to that because the matters are, invest are still under investigation. I mean, this is very complex for the investigative service. Uh, they are following email trails uh, that uh, indicate that there are a number of people in the periphery to this group 
each one of those will be looked at. And I can guarantee you and through you, the Australian public, that if they are found responsible in any way for demeaning uh, or derogatory actions against a a member of the army, a member of the public service, a member of the public, then they will be held to account for it. I want to come to that, but just before I do, you did say yesterday you've spoken to some of the women involved. Yes. How have they responded? How are they feeling? Oh, um, well, they're feeling terrible. They're feeling victimised, and I uh, entirely uh, understand that, and I want to be as supportive as I can. I, I did take the opportunity to speak to four women who felt comfortable taking my call and I will speak to another one who wasn't available yesterday uh, later this afternoon. I offered them an apology on behalf of the Australian Army and I assured them that I was deeply and personally involved in this matter and that I will see it through as best I possibly can. Are they soldiers? Uh, they are a group of women who uh, some are soldiers, some are public servants and some are members of the public. In your message to the Army personnel, your video message overnight, you say, and I quote you here, if you become aware of exploitation of others, then show moral courage and take a stand against it. Can you tell us now whether the more senior soldiers involved, and I'm talking about the lieutenant colonel, the majors and the captains, condoned these emails and images and failed to show moral courage or were they actively participating in the filming and dissemination of them? I think uh, there are a group uh, at the core of this uh, network who have been on the evidence that I have seen uh, certainly uh, responsible for the production and dissemination of imagery and uh, text-based emails that... Uh, a derogatory. And did that group include some of the high-ranking officers? Uh, well, if you if you include a major, one of a major has been suspended to date, and we're looking at further action in this group of five that I've commenced uh, suspension action under. So uh, yes, uh, in terms of uh, other ranks, uh, higher or lower, uh, the investigative service is um, uh, looking at their level of involvement. But you've you've hit. The absolute point here, you know, and that's why I said to the army, the standard that you set is the standard that you walk past. There is, I'm within that broader group of 90 that I spoke about yesterday, without doubt, uh, men, I think almost all men, in fact, probably entirely men, who have received... Uh, maybe in an involuntary way, uh, an email. And, you know, that's not unusual. We all receive emails mm. that we don't go looking for. They may, they may, I, I am now uh, talking hypothetically, they may have opened it and seen what it contained and yet done nothing about it. They mm. may well then have deleted it. But the question that I have for them is, well, why didn't you do something about it? Why didn't you tell me? Um, it's pretty clear through the messages that I've been giving to the Army over the last two years of my tenure that I have absolutely no tolerance for this behaviour and I will take action where I possibly can to rid our Army of it. And does that describe the what you might call the peripheral role of the Lieutenant Colonel who's involved in this? Uh, at the moment I can't make comment on that because I haven't seen any evidence particular to that individual, Fran. It's 14 to 8 on breakfast. Our guest this morning is the Chief of the Army, Lieutenant General David Morrison. David, you have told us that there is a Lieutenant Colonel involved, caught up in this. We, as you say, we don't know how yet. There's not a lot of distance in terms army terms between your rank and the rank of a lieutenant colonel. So it does seem as though all your efforts of changing this culture haven't really trickled down that far into the chain of command. Perhaps not much outside Russell officers. There are a lot of lieutenant colonels in the army, Fran, uh, men and women, who are doing an extraordinary job for Australia and who behave themselves with the greatest of propriety and dignity. I know that uh, the conclusion can and will be drawn that one individual uh, sets the tone for the broader group. That's not my belief. I mean, the Army has been my life for three and a half decades. There is no one in the country more proud of the Army than I am. I know we've got some issues with our culture and they're systemic. I know that I'm accountable as the Chief of Army to the government and indeed to the Australian nation to do something about it, and I am. But I don't think that you can draw the conclusions that the actions of a group of men, as heinous as they may be, reflects the culture, or wrong, reflects 
the the dignified way that the 50,000 men and women that make up the Australian Army go about their business in the service of the nation. So in your message, when you say the Army is changing, yeah. given the numbers involved in the scandal, yeah. it's around 100 people, and given the rank of some of them, and we know of the three suspended, one's a warrant officer, one's a sergeant, one's a major, and we've already talked about a lieutenant colonel, I would suggest the Army isn't changing, though. Uh, look, uh, as I said, you can... Uh, you're quite uh, within your rights to draw a conclusion like that and it's very hard on a morning such as this for me to argue against that other than to say that I don't believe that the actions of these people define the army. What will define us is how we deal with the matter. And on that point, you've said you'll be ruthless in yep. dealing with this. What mm. does that mean? Does that mean that these people will be kicked out? I mean, some, uh, John Cantwell and Peter Lay, both former generals, have said this morning these people should go. Yes, and I've said it as well and said it um, very explicitly to the Army in the uh, the video that you would have seen. But I've been saying it for some time now. Uh, there are a range of uh, options open for me as uh, investigations start to conclude and we establish that there are cases to answer. I can uh, prosecute uh, people found wanting under the Defence Force Discipline Act and uh, under that act, uh, depending of course on the seriousness of uh, the, the uh, offence that they have committed, they can be fined, they can be reduced in rank, they can be indeed uh, imprisoned uh, or they can be discharged from the army. I can also and will consider following an administrative path that uh, imposes warnings, imposes censures or indeed uh, terminates uh, an individual's career and I've got to tell you that um, I am uh, absolutely focused on ridding uh, what is a great army of men who cannot behave in an appropriate way and if that means that their service is terminated on establishing their complicity and their guilt then that is what I will do. So I think you've said both things in a sense there is a systemic problem in the ADF that the numbers suggest that um, but you've also said there's plenty of others there. Now the Defence Association's Neil James he disagrees he says it's not a systemic problem in the ADF do you accept that given the level, the rank of some of these people and the messages that you've been giving for a long time now, that some of this has happened while this Skype scandal has been going on and investigations have been going on into this behaviour and yet these men still behave like this, that mm. does suggest a systemic problem? I agree with you. I don't, you know, I have a, uh, a lot of respect for, for Neil. I've known him for many years and uh, on almost all uh, topics I think he adds a huge amount of uh, objective value to the debate around security or around our military. But on this point, I disagree with him. And I'm the Chief of Army. And I believe that there are systemic issues within the Army culture that must be addressed. And that's the, the very clear message that I'm giving both the Army and the Defence Force, uh, and as well the Australian nation. And it is supported wholeheartedly by David Hurley, the Chief of the Defence Force, and by Stephen Smith, the Minister for Defence. Lieutenant General David Morrison, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Fran. David Morrison, Lieutenant General David Morrison is the Chief of Army. It's nine minutes to eight. RN, your world unfolding.